Hello guys and welcome to this video which is made mostly for those who want to start working with digital dentistry solely. So they really want to turn their clinics or the, their practice into digital. Okay, If they are owners of clinic or not. So maybe you, you are not an owner of a clinic but you are still interested in working solely with digital dentistry and that's absolutely fine. Do you need to have the devices? Well actually no, you don't need because uh, maybe you can work with a laboratory, even the intraoral scanners. Uh, if you don't have an intraoral scanner, you can make an impression and digitalize this impression with the laboratory. But uh, here's the thing. This video is mostly to talk about 3D printers and, and milling machines for the dentists who want to buy, because the intraoral scanners we already discussed in other videos and where it's very simple about the intraoral scanners. Today, especially in Europe, you can purchase an intraoral scanner from 10,000 euros to 20, 25,000 euros. An average, of course, uh, this could vary depending on the country that you are. But the, this is um, worthy if you want to change your philosophy, for sure. Okay, If you want to change your philosophy, if you want to plan the cases beforehand, if you want to take advantage of the predictability of digital dentistry, then that's an advantage of digital dentistry. We, go back to the videos that we are discussing about digital dental methods and to our papers and our, the philosophy that we have been working on here in the YouTube channel and even in my research and you guys will realize that it's more predictable and it's worth it. But in, uh, realistically speaking, it's worthy to buy the, the intraoral scanner depending on the flow of patients that you have, of course, right? And that's even the answer about if it's worthy or not to purchase an, a 3D printer or a mini machine. Depends on your flow of patients, depends on your activities, the cost of your laboratory, the way you charge your patients and a lot of things. But why I did this video? Because many dentists, they, they have the intraoral scanner and they just want to buy a 3D printer or something to 3D print a single crown to make it a temporary crown. And then the most complex uh, works they will send to the laboratory. So the full arch cases, the, the large fixed bridges, they will still send to the laboratory, but they want to have something at the chair side. That's perfectly fine. So this video is for you. If you are watching this video and you are questioning yourself if you should buy a 3D printer or not, this video might help you a little bit. Of course, milling is still more expensive than, than 3D printing, but we need to know the advantages okay, and the differences. So let's talk about this. If you, are, if you don't have these devices, then you guys are seeing the picture below on the, top, uh, on the bottom left uh, corner of this screen, then you can still do your conventional acrylic resin you know, temporary crowds like that. If you don't remember how to do it or if you are in the beginning of your career, go back to this video. This is a video also teaching you how to do the temporary crown. Now let's discuss about the methods and the differences between 3D printing and milling, even the costs. So I will present a very nice table with the costs. Of course, you guys should know that 3D printing is the additive manufacturing method. The other one, milling, is the subtractive uh, manufacturing method. And then we have a lot of brands, right? So those would be brands of milling machines. Uh, ASIOS means axis, of course. So for axis milling devices, uh, you might have five axis milling machines, which are a little bit more expensive. The first one here, the Select Prime Mill, is a chair side milling machine, uh, more compatible with uh, the chair side. And the others you will find mostly in laboratories, although many dentists are buying the M1 from Zirconzano, for example, which is not so big and it's a nice milling machine. Of course, those are more expensive. We are going to talk about the numbers and those are 3D printers and they are options for you. Sprint Ray or the DLP 3D printer, uh, you have Sprint Ray, you have Flash Forge Hunter, you have the Strawman 3D printer, you know, so I'm just mentioning some brands that we have used here in research. And they are, of course, uh, easier to work with. They are easier uh, to calibrate. You have a projector that will last 4,000 hours of activity. So th that's an advantage of DLP. LCD is a little bit more, um, let's say, a little bit more complicated, uh, or, or at least it takes a little bit longer for you to do your learning curve. And you have many options. There is any cubic, there is the, the frozen that you guys are seeing here. And the differences is that LCDs usually, because of those differences, are cheaper, okay? So here we're talking about uh, 
300, uh, 400 euros, 500 euros 3D printer, the DLP would be 5,000 euros, for example, 6,000 euros, so it depends on the brand, of course. And Polyjet is the future, in my opinion, so like the strategies, and then this is way more expensive. We are going to show some numbers for you to understand the difference. So this will be closer to the cost of a milling machine, depending on the country that you are. Don't forget that uh, depending on the date that you are watching this video, this might be outdated, okay? So uh, don't forget that you should still look in the websites of the brands to make sure that this is accurate. Now, we published an article comparing 3D printing and milling regarding costs, accuracy, time taken to, to produce the prosthesis, so a very nice article. But then we arrived in this table, okay? So we have this table about costs. So let's understand about what we have here. We need to understand that the, this CPU here is the cost per unit. So pay attention to this column, the CPU column, because it's very important here for you, all right? So we have the device. For a milling machine, and this is a 5-axis milling machine, this is a good milling machine, then uh, the cost would be, let's say, 35,000 euros or uh, even more, depending on the, on the brand. So the M1 from Zircon would be a little bit more, but it's the one that I prefer to work with, for example. Here we have an Anycubic Photon, it's a LCD 3D printer, so a low cost, it's a, this one is low cost 3D printer. And then at the time of this paper, we found 252 euros of the cost of the device. But then you need the curing station, which is 230, to do the extra curing. Then you need the, to change the lead, you need the, the, you know, the, the lead and the film. Then you need the resin, the liquid resin. Of course, for milling, you also need the block. And then there is also the operator hourly rate, which is equal now for both of them. The you know, considering that they would be doing the same uh, role in your clinic or in your laboratory. And then um, the software, you also need a software for, for milling, for 3D printing, the software are usually free, the, 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 you know, the, there are uh, uh, different options here. And then we arrive in a cost for 3D printing per crown of 1.55 euros, where we have a cost per crown for milling of 10 0.64 euros. Still cheap, you, depending on where you are. You could charge your patients, then of course uh, we are talking about resin here, only resin. For zirconia then it's absolutely different, right? So a milling will allow you to, to mill zirconia in X and, and other materials for definitive crowns, but then uh, depending on your strategy you could work with a laboratory for those materials as well. Okay, so it depends on your strategy. Uh, I prefer so much more milling, okay, and you guys will understand why. Let's talk about the method now. So this is uh, the results that we got, okay? So let me bring this down a little bit for you to understand, okay? So we have uh, milled crowns and 3D printing crowns, and this is the trueness of the crown, which means that uh, there are two meshes superimposed here. One is the digital image of the crown designs and the other one, the crown fabricated and re scanned okay? So those are the differences between what it should be, the planned one, and what was actually fabricated, okay? So the, the actual accuracy of, of the methods to fabricate the crown. And meaning you guys are seeing here, so uh, 20 microns um, of difference, some areas with, uh, you know, 20 microns, 40 microns, 50 microns, you know. Uh, with uh, new papers that we have, we have even better results with the Zirconzan milling machine, for example. And, and 3D printed, uh, we have uh, actually worse results, of course, compared to the milling, considering that this is a LCD, low-cost 3D printer. Okay, so here we have areas with um, 160 microns of discrepancy. Still, that's a temporary crown, you know, but... Uh, Anyway, we should aim at least to have 120 microns. So until 120 microns, it's considered okay by most of the papers about this topic. And of course, that's the intaglio surface. So that's where the crown would fit. Uh, here is the occlusal surface, and then we have more discrepancies here. And that's why we need to adjust at the chair side, depending on the device that you have. However, 3D printers, resins, and mini machines are being developed each day more, each day better, 
okay uh, each passing day better and then uh, now we have better results of course right so you would expect that you should buy a method that you produce the crown and the crown will fit without chair side adjustments uh, considering that you have someone to design the crown and the, this person to design the crown, a CAD CAM technician or a, or a dental technician will be uh, experienced enough to do this properly. Okay? Or a trained dentist, depending on your strategy, in your clinic, of course. There are papers of uh, nice 3D printers, so DLP 3D printers finding similar results to milling machines. The Stratus 3D printer has very nice results in the literature as well. So it will depend on your brand. But don't forget that 3D printers, you need to place your supports. Uh, I'm talking about DLP and LCD 3D printers and even SLA, like a form labs. And then, of course, you need to place your supports. You need to choose the supports and then you need to trim your supports, of course. And the supports will be most likely in the occlusal surface or interproximal surfaces. And then, uh, you know, you need to adjust those and this might interfere in the final result as well. So don't forget that 3D printer, you also have this step. Then, of course, the adaptation of the crown, this belongs to the thesis. And I'm quoting now the thesis of my former PhD student, Dr. Ana Paula Aires, uh, where she compares the adaptation of the crowns. She measured the adaptation with a very nice method, which is this one, the triple scanning technique. And then she found that uh, there are differences between the devices, okay? There are differences between the devices and the milling machines got uh, better results, but it depends on, on several criteria, aspects, and even parameters of the devices, okay? So how to choose our device? Well, don't forget that we need to read the articles to choose based on research, based on uh, updated information. That's how you should uh, proceed to, to buy your, your 3D printer or your milling machine. 3D printers are cheaper, you can buy an LCD. The learning curve will be a little bit longer for you, but if you have time, then you will play with this 3D printer, you 3D print some crowns, and then, especially if the 3D printer is 8K, like the frozen 8K, then it will be not so difficult for you to uh, get used it and and you know be in your way 3d printing your temporary crowns for your patients another very important aspect is that now we have new materials which is resin with zirconia particles or ceramic particles and those are 3d printed resins which uh, which means that we can now uh, 3d print long-term crowns or at least long-term temporary crowns for our patients and that's very important especially for the patients who cannot afford a zirconia crown, for example, right? So another option for you, you should also look into the resin materials. In our papers, we have mentioned several of them. Maker Tech from Brazil, it's a very nice brand. Bio Crown, uh, we have um, uh, the Bego resin also with uh, some very nice materials for long-term temporary crowns. Uh, those are resins for 3D printers. And then you need to check the compatibility and choose your device and your brand of resin accordingly. If your brand of resin and the brand of your device are the same, so for example, Sprint Ray resin and Sprint Ray 3D printer, then it's uh, usually more compatible and a little bit easier for you to work with. Okay, and then the learning curve for your objects to be printed successfully will be so much faster. Okay, so those are the tips of today for you who is planning to purchase a 3D printer for your clinic or I don't know, for yourself, maybe, if you are an associate of a clinic, then you still didn't have this information before. Okay, check this paper. This is a very nice paper as well, uh, here, which uh, talks about the advantages of each method. Okay, we did this during the pandemic. And uh, check the previous videos, because this is a history that we are creating to inform our, uh, our colleagues about digital dental methods, for them to offer the best for their patients. See you guys on the next videos.